The AV-8B Harrier II was born as the heir to the throne of the first generation Harrier. But it is an entirely different aircraft, even though it has similar lines to its predecessor. The second generation Harrier was also an Anglo-Saxon design, but was created on the other side of the Atlantic. Now, we are investigating the AV-8B Harrier II, the successful heir to the throne. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. The second generation Harriers have more adventurous combat service than their predecessors. The McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II and British Aerospace Harrier II have successfully passed many tests in many battles. Just six years after the Harrier entered service, which had low range and payload capacity, both the UK and the USA had already begun to look for its successor. So Hawker Sidley and McDonnell Douglas started a joint development program for an advanced variant which would have twice the range and payload capability in 1973. This new aircraft unofficially called the AV-16, would have the more powerful Pegasus 15 turbofan. But the new engine was too big to be fitted into the existing variants of the Harrier. Yet, the UK left the program in 1975 and the USA also abandoned it one year later. So, these two countries decided to continue their own programs separately. The Brits were considering modifying existing aircraft with a new larger wing. But the USA focused on a complete redesign process. Washington authorized the program, which was to design an improved Harrier variant without a new engine development effort, in 1976. So, two AV-8As were modified with new wings, revised intakes and redesigned exhaust nozzles. These early prototypes, designated as YAV-8B, also had other aerodynamic differences. But their forward fuselage and cockpit were similar to the first generation Harrier. Our many viewers may ask how a US aviation company was able to develop a version of the Harrier without being subject to industrial rights restrictions. In the 1960s, Hawker Sidley had gained the right to modify the F-4 Phantom II's design according to the UK's requirements. In return, the British company had given the same rights to McDonnell Douglas for the Harrier. The YAV-8B made its first flight on November 9, 1978. The trials showed that the modified aircraft had better payload capacity, range and short takeoff and vertical landing, shortly style performance. So Washington approved the further development stage in 1979. But like the previous Harriers, this new variant also caused many debates. Although its performance was superior to the AV-8As, the aircraft still had a short range and low payload capacity. The US Navy was pressing heavily for the US Marine Corps to abandon the new Harrier and joined the FA-18 program to get a larger share of the budget. The help came from the other side of the Atlantic. The Brits returned to the program in 1981. But British Aerospace, which was now responsible for the Harrier program, became a subcontractor instead of a full partner. The AV-8B Harrier made its first flight on November 5, 1981. The US Marine Corps received the first production aircraft in 1983. The AV-8B reached squadron level operation capability two years later. The first British aerospace built development aircraft, Harrier GR-5, met the skies on April 30, 1985, entered service in 1987 and reached the squadron level operation capability in 1989. The reason for this delay was the Royal Air Force's initial decision to equip the aircraft with the FIN-1075 inertial navigation system. Yet, this system had reliability issues and later the Brits replaced it with ANS-130. The initial integration and certification process caused the delay. Different from the first generation Harrier, the AV-8B has six wing hardpoints and one 25mm 5-barrel GAU-12 equalizer 25 cannon. Its internal fuel capacity is 50% higher. The odd rigor landing gear legs are under the mid-span instead of the wing tips. This design change helped reduce the turning radius during taxiing. The engine intakes of the second generation Harriers are larger than its predecessor and have a revised inlet. The aircraft also has a supercritical wing, hands-on throttle and stick control and increased engineered lateral stability. These changes have improved the Harriers flight capability dramatically. 
to improve all-around visibility, the McDonnell Douglas engineers have raised the cockpit by 27 centimeters and added the aircraft a bubble canopy. The multi-purpose display of the AV-8B has been taken from the FA-18. The composite materials were extensively used, especially in front fuselage, tail assembly, one-piece supercritical wing, rudder, flaps and nose. 26% of the aircraft's structure is composite. The rear fuselage was extended by 46 cm to balance the redesigned front fuselage. The vertical stabilizer of the AV-8B directly comes from the Sea Harrier. The AV-8B Harrier II cannot vertically take off when it's fully loaded. Like its predecessor, the second generation Harrier can fly backwards. The British Harrier II had different avionics from the US variant. Besides, its wing featured a stainless steel leading edge which provided different flex characteristics and a higher bird strike protection than the AV-8B. Also, the second generation British Harriers had an additional pylon under each wing. They were equipped with the Zeus electronic countermeasure system. British aircraft had two 25mm single barrel cannons. The first production AV-8B Harrier IIs had only day attack capability. Its version built for the Spanish Navy was known as EAV-8B Matador II or VA-2 Matador. The later AV-8B Harrier II night attack variant was equipped with a forward-looking infrared camera and a more powerful F402RR408 engine. Also, its upgraded cockpit was compatible with night vision goggles. It was initially designated as AV-8D but renamed as AV-8NA later. The AV-8B Harrier II Plus variant is similar to the AV-8B NA but has the APG-65 radar which was taken from the early FA-18 instead of forward-looking infrared. This radar gives the aircraft the capability of launching the AIM-120 MRAM missile. The version built for the Spanish Navy is known as the EAV-8B Matador II Plus. The TAV-8B Harrier II is the two-seat trainer version. This variant has no combat capability. The Harrier GR5 was the first production variant of the British Harrier IIs. There was also the GR5A version which incorporated changes in the design in anticipation of the GR7 upgrade. The Harrier GR7 had nighttime operational capability. It was equipped with the nose-mounted forward-looking infrared and night vision goggles, an electronic countermeasure suite and new displays. All these variants had the 98 kN Pegasus Mark 105 turbofans. The GR7A variant was equipped with the 105 kN Pegasus Mark 107 engine which also had a better performance during hot and high and carrier-borne operations. Later, the UK upgraded the GR7's avionics and weapons and redesignated them as GR9. The Harrier GR9As were the upgraded variants of the GR7As. The two-seat training variant of the British Harrier IIs was the Harrier T10. Different from the TAV-8B, this model retained combat capability. The Harrier T12 was the upgraded two-seat training variant with the GR9's avionics. Italy, Spain and the USA are still using the second-generation Harriers. The UK retired its Harrier IIs. The AV-8B Harrier II Plus has a length of 14.12 meters, a wingspan of 9.25 meters and a height of 3.55 meters. Its wing area is 22.61 square meters. The empty weight of the aircraft is 6,340 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight is 11,100 kilograms. One 105 kN Rolls-Royce Pegasus F402RR408 turbofan engine provides a maximum speed of 1,083 km per hour, in other words, 585 knots. The aircraft can reach a range of 3,300 km. The AV-8B's combat radius is over 550 km. Its service ceiling is 15,250 meters, in other words, 50,000 feet. The aircraft has one 25mm 5-barrel GAU-12 equalizer rotary cannon in underbelly pods and six hardpoints. It can carry AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-120 MRAM air-to-air, -air, AGM-65 Mayrick air-to-surface missiles, rocket pods, and different types of bombs. As mentioned before, the second-generation Harriers have busy combat careers. The US Marine Corps extensively used its AV-8Bs in the 1991 Gulf War. It deployed the Harrier IIs on USS Nassau and Tarawa amphibious assault ships and land bases. The AV-8B was baptized with fire on January 17, 1991. 
the aircraft attacked the Iraqi artillery, which was shelling Kafji. During the war, 86 US AV-8Bs performed nearly 3,500 sorties. Their mission availability rate was over 90%. Still, the Iraqi surface-to-air missiles managed to shoot down five AV-8Bs. According to General Norman Schwarzkopf, the Harrier II was one of the seven weapons which played a crucial role in the war. The US AV-8Bs also fought in the 1999 Kosovo War. One aircraft was lost. Later, they answered the call of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq. Over these countries, the AV-8Bs had the Lightning II targeting pods. In the 2003 Iraq War, 60 US Harrier IIs performed over 1,000 sorties. They successfully conducted airstrikes on Sirte, Libya on April 5, 2011. But the situation was not always beer and skittles for them. In Afghanistan, six US AV-8Bs were destroyed by the Taliban during the raid carried out on September 14, 2012. Later, they have continued to fight against the ISIL over Iraq and Libya. The British Harrier IIs were baptized with fire in 1995 over former Yugoslavia. The Royal Air Force's GR-7s, stationed at Gioia del Colle Air Base in Italy, carried out the strike and reconnaissance missions in over 120 sorties. They also provided target designation support for laser-guided bombs dropped by the Jaguars. Four years later, during the Kosovo War, the GR-7s fought against former Yugoslavia again. Twelve British Harriers successfully carried out 870 sorties and destroyed many targets with high precision. During 2003 Operation Telek, they now had the capability of launching AGM-65 missiles. The British Harrier IIs conducted reconnaissance and strike missions, destroyed Scud missile launchers, hit the Iraqi fuel depots in Basra to cripple enemy ground vehicles and provided close air support. In 2006, the Royal Air Force began to deploy the Harrier GR-7s to Afghanistan. They carried out many close air support missions. During these missions, the aircraft generally carried rocket pods. According to the British media, there were some complaints in the British Army about the Harrier's insufficient cannon power for the job. Some officers even addressed the Harrier's close air support capability as totally useless compared to the A-10. In Afghanistan, one Harrier GR-9 was destroyed by the Taliban on the ground on October 14, 2005. The Italian Navy's AV-8Bs participated in air operations in Somalia and Albania in 1995 and 1997 respectively, but they did not fire at anger. The Italian Harrier IIs were baptized with fire in 1999 during the Kosovo War. They carried out more than 60 sorties and conducted strike missions. The Italian AV-8Bs also participated in the 2011 military intervention in Libya and dropped 160 guided bombs on Libyan targets. The Spanish EAV-8Bs participated in Operation Deny Flight, enforcing the UN's no-fly zone over Bosnia and Herzegovina. As some of our viewers commented on our Harrier Part 1 video, the scene in the movie True Lies was one of the most memorable appearances of this beautiful bird of prey. The student becomes the master. The second generation of the Harrier has been more successful than the first generation. The aircraft is now getting ready for its well-deserved retirement. After 10 years, we will probably see this legendary beauty only in the aviation museums. But the Harrier will continue its vertical landings on military aviation enthusiasts' hearts. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.